Call this meeting to order. 7 p.m. Adoption of agenda. If there's no changes or additions. Councillor Cutler. Question. Vote by Councillor Cutler that the agenda be accepted as presented. All in favor. Adoption of minutes from May 13th. I make a motion to adopt the regular meeting minutes for May 13th as presented. Councillor Zimmer, question. Moved by Councillor Zimmer that the regular meeting minutes of May 13th, 2024 be accepted as presented. All in favor. Approved. I hereby open the public hearing for bylaw 1787. Abe? Uh, yeah, so council had uh, first reading of this bylaw at the last council meeting. Uh, this is a land use bylaw amendment uh, and in accordance with uh, legislation, uh, we have to have a public hearing before second and third readings. And so the uh, bylaw and the public hearing were advertised to the public. Uh, we didn't receive any submissions for people looking to present. Um, however, uh, people are still welcome to uh, uh, speak to this bylaw if they're if they're here. The public is. Um, prior to that, we should have a bit of administrative conversation about that. We have our ORSC planner with us uh, via Zoom. Uh, Katie, are you with us? Yep. Good evening. Um, so, as we discussed at your last meeting, bylaw 1787 is an amendment to your land use bylaw. The purpose would be to add grocery store as a discretionary development officer discretionary use, as well as to amend the definitions of food processing major and minor. Uh, this would allow the minimum square footage of a major facility to be up to 12,000 square feet, where it's currently 5,000. And then the maximum of a minor facility to be 12,000 square feet rather than 5,000. Uh, this would just allow for increased square footage for existing building, um, sorry, food processors who are considered minor currently, uh, as well as open you up to potentially more possibility for new business uh, without opening it up to that industrial scale. Uh, so if bylaw 1787 is passed, your land use bylaw will be amended and the development authority can consider applications for grocery stores within the C2 district or uh, for any additions or new food processing facilities which are minor in nature subject to the requirements of the land use bylaw. So that's all for me. Questions? Concerns? Anyone in the audience want to speak to this? I hereby close the public hearing. Next. Delegation, Claire's Home Coordinated Response to Elder Abuse Committee. Gabriel. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for having me here today. My name is Gabrielle Kirk and I'm the coordinator of the Claire's Home Coordinated Response to Elder Abuse Coalition, CCR for short, as well as the Vulcan Regional Response to Elder Abuse Council. I'm here today to address a critical issue facing our community, the growing prevalence of elder abuse and the urgent need for comprehensive support services for our seniors. The CCR was established in 2016 in response to an alarming increase of elder abuse concerns in Claire's Home. With 36% of our population over the age of 60, it became imperative that multiple community agencies to unite in preventing and addressing these concerns. Our coalition's mission is to create a coordinated response model, leveraging the knowledge, services, and expertise of various agencies and individuals to provide effective and efficient solutions to elder abuse. We're comprised of various health professional agencies committed to the cause, including, including Claire's Home Medical Clinic, Alberta Health Services, and the RCMP. Elder abuse, which includes financial, emotional, physical, sexual, and spiritual abuse, as well as neglect, 
jeopardizes the health and well-being of older adults. Often, multiple forms of abuse occur simultaneously. In Claire's home, the most frequently reported types of abuse are emotional abuse and uh, financial abuse. It's estimated that up to one in eight older adults in Canada experience elder abuse. Since the inception of the CCR, my role has grown and our program's activities have evolved. We now include education and awareness, case management, mediation, and prevention services. In 2019, we extended our support to Vulcan, helping them develop their own coordinated response model, which I now oversee as well. Over the last few years, I've responded to hundreds of elder abuse concerns in this area. When I began my work in Claire's home, I was co-located with FCSS in the station just down the road. Uh, working alongside FCSS was a privilege, um, as it allowed me to witness firsthand the diverse support services they offer and the profound impact that they have on their residents. The amount of inquiries they receive on a daily basis regarding financial support, housing options, tax benefits and credits, home support services, and health and well-being programs is overwhelming. FCSS is a vital resource for our seniors, providing crucial support and connections to necessary services. However, in 2021, FCSS experienced a reduction in staff from three positions to two, which has significantly impacted their ability to address the growing needs of the community. The increasing aging population, limited housing options, financial strain, inflation, caregiver stress, rising mental health and addictions concerns, and isolation has exacerbated the situation. This reduction in staff has limited the ability to address the full extent of the community's needs. There is a direct association between these challenges I just listed and the increased risk of elder abuse. So in 2022, we utilized one of our grants to budge the gap and fund a .5 FTE senior service position at the Claris Home FCSS office. This amounts to 22,000 each year, so 44,000 over the two year period. This role is crucial in connecting seniors to resources that contribute to their independence and quality of life. When low income, isolated, and vulnerable seniors are connected with resources they need, they're more likely to live healthy, dignified, and independent lives with their communities. Research shows that the social return on investment is three to one when investing in senior support programs, meaning that for every dollar invested, there's a social return of approximately $3. This includes improved health outcomes, reduced healthcare costs, increased social interactions, and enhanced quality of life for seniors. However, sustaining this essential program should not fall on the shoulders of nonprofits. Our budget is limited and our funding depends on grants that change annually. In this, if this position ceases to exist, the negative impact to our community will be profound. Clarissa has one of the largest older adult populations in Alberta and the aging population is expected to double in the province by 2036. The town of Clarissa needs to think long term with an upstream mindset. Investing in preventative measures today will save our community from greater social and economic costs in the future. Supporting our seniors is not just an immediate need, but a wise investment for the community's future. The town of Clarisome is in a unique position to support these vital services. It is not just an opportunity, but an obligation to ensure the well-being of our senior residents. Therefore, I'm asking town council to consider funding a senior support position at FCSS starting November, 2024. The investment is not merely a commitment to the dig not is not merely financial, but a commitment for the dignity, independence, and quality of life for our seniors. So thank you for allowing me the time to speak today, and I'm happy to answer any questions before you continue the rest of your meeting. Questions? What's financial abuse? Um, it's the most common form of abuse that we see. Um, a lot of times, usually we see it within um, adult children trying to take money um, usually their senior savings away from them. We often see this in uh, dementia cases where someone has power of attorney, they control access over the banks, and even here in Claire's home, I did deal with one case that extended over a million dollars lost to the senior. Um, there, there is a lot of financial abuse. I would say most of it's around power of attorneys, but it's also just people pressuring their parents for money, um, pressuring their neighbors, pressuring their friends. Um, manipulating them, lying to them, things like that. Questions? Councillor Kepp? So when you talk about this position, it, it's a part-time position? Yes, it's a 0.5 FTE right now. So 
and it's it's working beside FCSS right now. Yes, so they're co-located in FCSS. They work directly with Barb and Starla there, but they are funded fully by us, and um, really direction comes. It's it's a partnership with FCSS and ourselves. So direction. And so as far as the FCSS is concerned, that support system has helped them mitigate and be able to provide the services they provide along with these support systems for the seniors. Yes, yeah. They've been able to, I mean, the amount of people that come into that office is overwhelming. Lots of times when I go in there, they're constantly with clients and having someone there designated specifically for senior concerns has been a huge help to them. Councillor Kettles. You mentioned it's a 0.5 position grant funded, mm -hmm. so I take it that grant funding is running. It will be ending by the end of uh, Is there any prospect of a renewed grant, of uh, you know trying for a different grant, uh, something like that? I'm always looking for grants. Um, this was through the SIP grant, which is the Government of Alberta. It was a project-based one, so it does end um, October 2024, and we can't reapply for that specific grant again we need at least a one-year gap between the ending and then the start of a new, a new program. Um, I am looking at other grant opportunities, but um, none that have been successful or align with the proper timelines and stuff. Okay, thank you. Councillor Cutler. I sit on this board with Gabriel, so I'm trying to feed questions, but it's it's so again one of the one of the biggest concerns is we've seen. A great need for this position within this community and very successful with this position to have a nonprofit to continue to try to find funding and find grants and applications and those types of things is what is hard on this board to try to keep that so what you're here tonight for is to say hey we've set it up we've done the trial we've, we've seen the numbers asking the town of Clare's home to see if there's a way that we can fund it on a permanent basis to provide for our residents within our community. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. I mean, being a nonprofit, I mean, that's a realistic, that's a reality of all nonprofits is that our funding goes up and down and up and down. Um, there's rarely ever consistent funding, but we know that this program works. We know that there's a need, and um, I think it, it should be considered as a, as a permanent position in the town. I think Gabrielle herself applies for the same amount of grants as the town of Clara's home does. She, I she, do apply for she does have, she, And that's, we're, they're always looking, right? And, and, and that's the point, is, is we're kind of at that point where the government's kind of saying, this is what you got. And before that position, I, I, I applaud you for taking the initiative to, to get this conversation started because we don't want to see October come around. Oh, we tried and we couldn't find anything. So at least sparking the conversation around what is possible is, is, mm -hmm. is a great start. So. Thank you. Gabriel has been very successful at writing grants too, so she's she's a pro. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes they're hard to come by, unfortunately. <laughs> so questions, concerns, comments. Perfect. Thank you so much for having Thank me. You. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, moving on to action items. Request for decision, bylaw number 1787, land use bylaw amendment eight. So uh, second and third readings of uh, bylaw 1787, land use bylaw amendment um, for the uh, public hearing that we just had is on the agenda here. Um, if you have any questions uh, for the planner administration, uh, now would be the time. Obviously, no comments uh, from the public hearing. Questions, concerns? Councillor Cutler. I'll make second motion for 1787. Councillor Cutler, question? Moved by Councillor Cutler to get bylaw number 1787, a land use bylaw amendment, second reading. All in favor? Approved. Could I have a motion for third reading? I'll give a motion for third reading. Councillor Ross, question? 
Moved by Councillor Ross to give bylaw number 1787 and land use bylaw amendment third and final reading. All in favor? Approved. Correspondence, Honorable Rick MacGyver, Minister of Municipal Affairs. A. Thanks, Katie. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, some correspondence here from the Minister of Municipal Affairs uh, regarding uh, Bill 20. Uh, there's been a fair bit of uh, conversation uh, in this uh, council chambers as well as many council chambers uh, across the province recently about Bill 20. Uh, they have, uh, the province has uh, obviously received some of that correspondence and the feedback from municipalities and from Alberta municipalities who have been advocating on behalf of urban municipalities throughout the province. Um, any thoughts or comments from council on this one? <laughs> Don't quite say anything. No. They're not listening. <laughs> I, I think. I, oh, go ahead. Councillor Cutler. I, I read the amendment, but it just didn't, like the amended processes, it didn't see much of a change for a lot of the different things. I didn't see much of a difference. I, I didn't really understand. But. Councillor Carlson. <clears throat> I will. Uh, <laughs> I will choose to refrain from a negative statement. Take it for misinformation. I mean, <laughs> misinformation. Well done. Okay, moving on. Correspondence, be prepared program, emergency management, exemplary service award, a... So the... Uh, there's some emergency management uh, service awards. They are looking for nominations. Um, a number of categories they are seeking nominations for resilient communities, outstanding contribution to emergency management. There's a youth category, search and rescue employees, and search and rescue volunteers. Um, Provinces and territories are now accepting nominations for the resilient communities, youth, and outstanding contribution to emergency management. So if there's anybody that council would like to uh, recognize or organize. Councillor Zimmer. Um, maybe on the search and rescue part, um, one of our localized, Kelly Fowler, does search and rescue. He's trained one of his own dogs. He's been part of the search and rescue for nine years. He's helped train other search and rescue dogs. So maybe if we can throw a shout out or a cool. nomination nomination for him. You can do that. Just a motion Need for a that. motion. I would like to make a motion to nominate Kelly Fowler for the search and rescue category award. Search and rescue vol volunteers, I think, hey? Search and rescue volunteers? Yep. Question. Moved by Councillor Zimmer to nominate local resident Kelly Fowler for the Exemplary Service Award, um, the Search and Rescue Volunteer category through the Be Prepared program. All in favor? Approved. Councillor <laughs> Meister. I would also like to nominate uh, our DEM, Jason Hemaway, for outstanding contribution to emergency management. I think he does a good job of educating people and he's always doing it with a great attitude and I've watched some of the activities go on and 
he's a great leader. I know it takes a team, but I think he's in a really good position. I agree. We'll get him to write up his own nomination. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write it up for you if you want. Uh, that'll be for outstanding oh. contribution to emergency management. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Kareen's not ready. <laughs> I'm I, just type all these I, never, I try to anticipate, but I always I can't anticipate everything. Okay. Question. Moved by Councillor Meister to nominate Director of Emergency Management Jason Hemaway for the Outstanding Contribution to Emergency Management Award through the Be Prepared Program. All in favor? Approved. Okay, correspondence. Alberta Municipalities Letter to Premier Smith. A. So there's a letter to Premier Smith uh, circulating from Alberta municipalities right now, and it's regarding provincial capital funding. Um, at the Spring Caucus, uh, the Premier discussed capital funding uh, from the province to municipalities equaling $3.6 billion. Um, and uh, I believe there was a comment in, comment in there made uh, that it's roughly equal to the amount of taxes that they, the province collects from municipalities. Uh, and so on further investigation, uh, it was shown that about half that um, 3.6 billion comes from the federal government. And so uh, they are, Alberta municipalities, they are um, just bringing this information to light in their correspondence uh, and looking for a review of the provincial property tax system. Questions, comments? Take it for information. Moving on, correspondence, Alberta Seniors Community and Social Services. Active Communities Initiative Grant, Abe? Yes, so this uh, grant opportunity is currently receiving expression of interest uh, for the Active Communities Initiative Grant. This uh, had a quick look on it today and it looks like primarily um, nonprofits or societies rather uh, that are eligible uh, for the funding. There's a few other eligible categories. Um, but the funding can go to small to medium sized projects, including indoor and outdoor skating rinks, community pools, uh, indoor turf centers, pickleball courts, sports fields and courts, and other sports and recreational facilities. Uh, so in the past, we have forwarded this on to the Ag Society and uh, um, uh, senior centers can be included in this as well. Uh, so I think we wanna get the information out to community uh, uh, the community hall uh, group um, might, if their society might be eligible, those kinds of things, we want to get that information out to them um, and potentially uh, uh, working with the town on, on some projects that might be eligible. We'd be able to help them out uh, administratively at least, work through that. So that's information to share with your committees. Golf course? Pretty, pretty late. <laughs> moving on, we'll take that for information. Moving on, correspondence, Claire's Home Social Center Society. So this is a request to council for a letter of support for a farmer's market application. Uh, they are looking to organize another farmer's market in town uh, and like, uh, sorry, through the actual farmer's market uh, legislation. Um, so they need uh, letters of support from the community uh, for that application. And on Tuesdays. Councillor Cutler. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to write a letter of support.
Question. Moved by Councillor Cutler to write a letter of support for the Clarsholm Social Center Society's application for farmers markets on Tuesdays in Clarsholm. All in favor? Approved. Moving on. Correspondence. Don Shirt. In camera meeting with AHS EMS delegation on March 25th, 2024. Eight. So council held a uh, in camera meeting with AHS EMS in March 2024. Um, and Don Sharp sits on an EMS uh, grassroots uh, committee. Uh, that is looking into uh, the service um, and is collecting, uh, I guess, advocating for, for, is an advocacy group for improving the service. Um, they're questioning the need to go into FOIP for that, for that meeting. Uh, and so they've requested that um, any future meetings uh, with AHS be in public. And if there's, uh, I don't know, I, to ensure there's a good reason, uh, I guess. Um, council did ask those questions uh, when they came. Uh, so uh, I think, I don't, do you, does council have any comments or, or feedback on that? Councilor Cutler. I appreciate his concern, but I mean, I will have a meeting with the AHS if I feel the need to have an in-camera meeting for information purposes, but I mean, I appreciate it, understand it. He can continue on doing his advocacy role and we'll continue on doing our work for the people. Anyone else? Moving on, number eight, correspondents Cliff and Audrey Yeager. Road and traffic safety concerns, Abe? So we have a letter to council from the public regarding um, the condition of some alleys uh, in town. Uh, behind the IGA is one that they've mentioned, uh, which is a challenge. We are, the town is planning to do some work uh, back there and realign the alley back there. Um, but that's not done yet. Um, requesting a light at uh, Highway uh, 2 and 520. Um, and speed limits at the hospital needing enforcement. Questions, comments? No, I was going to say, I think we've beaten this many times. I know for those that aren't privy of some information, the, the light gets brought up a lot with people. I know this council has brought it up, the previous council, and I believe even the council previous to them. Um, it's not like it's falling on deaf ears. It would be nice to have a light, but I don't think that's ever going to happen from the answers we get from Alberta Transportation, who owns the highway. It's not part of the town, so... A light will never happen. We can uh, we can provide a response with some of the information uh, that's been shared around this table, uh, and some of the information we have on uh, the work that we're looking to do to improve the alleys. Thank you. Just get a get a motion for that, please. Motion. I'll make the motion. To respond, <laughs> to respond by letter yeah. to direct administration to respond to Cliff and Audrey Agger. Question. Yeah. Moved by Councillor Meister to direct administration to respond to Cliff and Audrey Agger's concerns. Mm. All in favor? Approved. Request for decision, tax waiver, Royal Canadian Legion. Ape. So uh, the town of Clarezome has received a request from the Royal Canadian Legion uh, to, uh, regarding the property taxes located at 414 53 Avenue East. Uh, this is a yearly request that the Legion asks for forgiveness on the municipal portion uh, of their taxes. 
Uh, this year they are requesting $1,349.89. Um, council's in favor. Uh, we've done this, council has done this since 2012. Council's in favor. Uh, we would uh, require a motion to do that. Questions, concerns? Can I have a motion, please? I can prevent that motion. Councillor, question. Councillor Kettles. Moved by Councillor Kettles to cancel the municipal portion of the 2024 property taxes levied on the property located at 414 53rd Avenue East in the amount of $1,349.89. All in favor? Approved. Request for decision tax waiver. Clarisville Medical Clinic. Ape? Uh, so similar to the last uh, request, um, the medical clinic uh, operated by the MD of Willow Creek is asking for uh, a uh, tax waiver for their municipal portion of their taxes for 2024. Um, they are seeking... Uh, tax relief and the amount of $7,163.15. Um, this is historically done by council in the spirit of cooperation and to support, uh, in, in support of uh, health care in the region. Questions, concerns? Can I have a motion, please? One motion. Councillor Ross. Question. Moved by Councillor Ross to cancel the municipal portion of the 2024 property taxes levied on the property owned by the MD Willow Creek, located at 4215 Fairway Drive, in the amount of $7,163.15. This cancellation is in a spirit of cooperation with the municipal neighbor and to support the Clarestone Medical Clinic and public health in our region. All in favor? Approved. Request for decision. Expression of interest application rural community immigration pilot. Usually get more than one. Hey, yes. So we've talked a little bit about this recently, Council. Our um, RNIP Rural Northern Immigration uh, Program. That pilot with the federal government pilot program uh, has come to an end, uh, well, or will officially uh, end at the end of August. And so there is a new pilot program, a second pilot program uh, called the Rural Community Immigration Pilot. Uh, and there's also a Francophone Community Immigration Pilot attached to that. Um, we were under the impression that uh, Immigration Canada was going to try to roll the pilot that we were part of into a permanent uh, locally uh, administered immigration program. Uh, however, uh, they are rolling forward with another pilot program which builds off the program. So these are still uh, non-permanent programs, but we do have the opportunity to uh, submit an expression of interest uh, for that second pilot program. Uh, and uh, we have seen a lot of success with that program. We've got a lot, uh, a lot of good programs, uh, a lot of growth uh, in the town through that program, uh, the, the first round. And so administratively, we are set to hit the ground running if we're successful with, uh, with another round of the pilot. And we believe that this is a, a great uh, boost for the town. Uh, and we're recommending that uh, council approve our direct administration to uh, submit an expression of interest uh, for the rural community immigration pilot. Uh, Questions, concerns? Sorry, bit of information um, for your consideration. Our boundary currently includes uh, Stavely and the MD, uh, so we will need supporting letters uh, from them. Uh, that's how we would like to uh, submit the application. Uh, with that boundary, I think it's a 25 kilometer radius. 
Um, however, if we can't get them on board, we'd still be interested in submitting, uh, shrink the boundaries to just uh, Claire's home. So. Councilor Zimmer. Do we know how much is going to, is there any cost to the town for this? Staff. We, yeah, staffing. We, we will uh, manage that uh, with existing staffing. We do have some funding currently for uh, the support services and activities uh, for the immigration support activities and services programming that does run out uh, in 2025 um, so uh, presumably that will get scaled back some of that uh, some of those activities will get scaled back um, and the staffing is currently funded by grant funding as well and so the the plan moving forward would be to uh, roll those positions that are currently grant funded into uh, tax funded positions and we've had these conversations uh, previously council sure so there will no current increase to uh, no no sorry <laughs> councillor Cutler <laughs> Um, when, we, when we put an expression of interest of application, we apply, and then there's still a decision-making process once we get the information of the program, correct? Uh, that's my understanding of it, yes. Like from, from council, from the council, yeah. I, believe, I believe so. I, I do have concerns about applying for another immigration pilot project in regards to there was, I want to speak politically correct, a lot of fails without check stops with the first pilot project. I'm just going to use this as an example. We had to run it through the ECDEV. I know the ECDEV does not, is not in favor of running it through the ECDEV again type of, I, I just want to make sure all those processes that we have the proper supports with support systems within the community or whatever that's going to help. I do have concerns about how it runs. So I just, I, I don't mind applying for stuff yep. I, as long as this isn't a decision of if we get accepted, we're going to take it until we find out more details of this pilot project itself. Right. So yeah, it is a it is a, an expression of interest at this point. Right. So we would submit that. Um, in terms of how the program rolls out, it would be very similar. Uh, it would be overseen by economic development again, and and that committee. That's how it would be uh, de facto structured at this point. Um, through the Economic Development Committee to review the uh, applications, applications and, yes. and success rates. And, 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 it, that and, I, is, and I can appreciate that there are issues and concerns. That is a pretty standard way for it to run in communities. Um, so I'm not sure what, what options we would have to vet. And maybe other communities are doing, have done it a little differently. Um, we could potentially look into that. Um, uh, vetting the applications or approving the applications. I do have big concerns about another pilot project without the proper support systems. And I would counter that with the support systems that we have had from Willow Creek uh, Immigration Services, uh, the uh, Catholic Immigration Services. Uh, we've seen many assumptions of potential issues um, that have neither been proven or substantiated um, but tend to happen in a community of our size um, and realizing that there is going to have to be some um, redevelopments within our ECDEV committee and our ECDEV program in order for economic de development to even succeed in this community. Um, I, I would counter that this is an essential component to that success. Uh, so I would strongly recommend that we proceed with a letter of interest. Questions, concerns? Councillor Carlson, question? Moved by Councillor Carlson to direct administration to submit an expression of interest application for the Rural Community Im Immigration Pilot and draft a letter of support to be signed by Mayor Brad Schlossberger. 
All in favor? Approved. Opposed. 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 <laughs> Councillor Cutler. Request for decision. GIS Orthophoto Subdivision Project. Abe? So we are looking for uh, a couple of out of budget expenditures, um, Council. Uh, two projects out of the development department uh, that came through after the uh, uh, 2024 budget approval. Um, so the first one uh, at the April 22nd council meeting, council made a motion to begin the uh, process of removing the municipal reserve to correct lot lines uh, from an old development uh, issue at Willow Park. This goes back about uh, 20 years ish. Um, and so uh, the process of advertising has begun um, and we actually received uh, uh, a cost today of 3680 is, is what the cost will be um, for, for that work. Um, the subdivision costs. So uh, because it was an unbudgeted uh, project, we, we would like uh, a motion from council. Uh, to approve the out of budget expenditures for those subdivisions uh, and recommend that they come from uh, land reserve, the town's land reserves. Um, additionally, uh, the MD Well Creek is uh, doing their aerial uh, GIS photos this year, um, and we uh, are looking to uh, piggyback onto the work that they're doing and have them do an aerial photo for the town. As you can see in the attached photo, our aerial photo currently doesn't capture uh, the most recent annexation. Um, and this is one thing that came through to us uh, after budget uh, approval as well. Um, it has been three years. It's kind of uh, standard uh, when you would want those uh, ortho photos updated every three, four years. Uh, and so the cost for that uh, is $5,429. Um, and uh, we're also recommending that be paid out of the land reserves. Questions? So if we, if we don't, Councillor Kettles. Uh, I'm happy to move the first uh, one for the correction line for $5,000. Councillor Zimmer? I just had a question. So if we don't piggyback off the MD, it'll be a few years before we can do our own again? Uh, yes, or potentially doing our own at a uh, more significant cost. I, I don't know what that would be, but we would be on our own to, to get it done whenever we wanted to. Um, with that, uh, I know we've got uh, our new area to the north with the area structure plan approved. Um, we've got one that should be potentially finished within this year. I would hope, expect, pray for. Um, will those lands be uh, in that photo as well so we can proceed with it when it, when it is time? Yes, uh, we'll make sure those ones are in there. I think they currently are. This picture doesn't show uh, show it accurately. Uh, so we'd have North Point and Evolution yep. within within that working space. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And they're currently not in there. Well, the way this screen capture is, you can see North Point's not in there, um, but it, it currently is on our on our GIS. Yes, um, but we'll just make sure that it's yeah, it's in there for sure. Questions? Could I have a motion to approve the out of budget expense for the completion of the Willow Park subdivision project up to $5,000? Councillor Kettles. Question? Moved by Councillor Kettles to approve the out of budget expense for the completion of the Willow Park subdivision project up to $5,000 to be paid out of land reserves. All in favor? Approved. Can I have a motion to approve the out-of-budget expense for GIS photos in the amount of $5,429? Councillor Kettles. 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 Councillor Kett
Councillor Ross, question? Moved by Councillor Ross to approve the out of budget expense for the GIS photos in the amount of $5,429 to be paid out of land reserves. All in favor? Opposed? Approved. Request for decision appointing assessor by name. Abe? Um, yeah, so uh, the town is required to appoint the assessor um, uh, by name uh, and uh, legislatively we're required to do that every year. Uh, our assessment company uh, is Benchmark Assessment Consultants out of Lethbridge and our assessor is Logan Wilagi and we this is kind of a formality we have the contract with them for another four or so years um, and so we've got that service locked in place but legislatively we do need to uh, have that person who's doing it appointed so we're looking for a motion for that who would like to make that motion councillor carlson question Moved by Councillor Carlson to appoint the town's current assessor, Logan Wailagi, as an employee of Benchmark Assessment Consultants, Inc., as the assessor for the town of Clareson for the 2024 assessment year. All in favor? Approved. Request for decision. Flag policy. Abe? So we have uh, for your consideration here a new policy council, uh, flag policy 5.9.10. Uh, we're proposing uh, this policy that will direct the organization uh, on the half masting of the flags at the town owned facilities, approximately 13 flags, uh, and the general displaying of flags. So we currently don't have a policy um, directing administration on this matter. There is at times some confusion in the community uh, and admittedly in the organization um, when we should be doing this. Uh, and so uh, we have uh, developed a policy here. Um, I'll just review uh, some of the highlights of it. Uh, we will be identifying the day of mourning, which is April 28th, and Remembrance Day as the only recurring days of the year uh, that we uh, half mast the flags. Uh, other unplanned days uh, would be um, notification of death of the Sovereign, Governor General, Prime Minister, Lieutenant Governor of Alberta, Premier of Alberta, sitting MP representing the riding, the sitting MLA representing the riding, uh, a sitting member of council um, or a town of Claris Home employee who dies in line of duty. Um, so generally this would sync with uh, Heritage Canada's uh, guidelines for half-masting. Um, however, we do have one, uh, one thing to know here is that when the half-masting falls on the weekend, uh, we currently don't do it exactly uh, as, as is recommended by Canadian Heritage. Uh, we do it on the last working day um, before and then we'll uh, raise the flags on the first working day afterwards uh, that is done for operational and budgetary purposes um, so uh, that's what we're suggesting that we do um, if council would like us to actually follow the, the, the letter of the law so to speak uh, we can do that uh, it would just involve us coming in uh, on weekends having staff come in on weekends uh, to do that um, it's not a significant cost um, overall and so uh, but it is it, there would be a, a little bit of overtime associated with that when it does happen uh, when the half massing should be done on a weekend uh, there is a bit of a budgetary implication uh, for that so um, the policy went to the admin services committee at the beginning of the month and uh, they recommended that uh, it come to council for consideration questions concerns Could I have a motion, please? I'll motion it. Councillor Ross. Question? Moved by Councillor Ross to approve policy number 5.9.10, the Town of Clarkson's flight policy, 
effective May 27th, 2020. All in favor? Approved. Opposed? Opposed. <laughs> Request for decision. Hiring policy update. Ape. So, uh, yeah, this one is an update to the town's hiring policy. Uh, essentially, we are looking to improve communications uh, between managers uh, when we hire internally uh, and, and someone moves from one department to another. Uh, we currently encourage uh, people, uh, uh, employees rather, uh, to apply for positions um, internally when they come up and our the town's um, policy is to hire the best qualified person uh, for the job and so if that happens to be someone internally um, then then we'll do that uh, the idea there is to retain people and to uh, uh, well the idea is actually to hire the best person for the job um, but there are some advantages in retaining people and engaging staff uh, who are looking potentially looking to move on uh, if there's an opportunity to move somewhere else in the organization um, to to retain them uh, so we do have we have created uh, uh, some provisions here that would require um, a hiring manager who selects an existing employee from another department to reach out to the outgoing manager um, and to have that conversation once they've determined that hiring manager has determined uh, that they are selecting uh, the employee for the position the existing employee um, to reach out and connect with the departing manager on timing of the transfer um, and uh, the best timing for, for that uh, department. Uh, essentially is a, is a courtesy just to arrange a, a least painful um, transfer uh, from one department to another. Um, doesn't give the outgoing manager the ability to say no, but it does give them the ability to have some say uh, if it's a busy time and they need that employee for another month and the, the hiring manager can wait, then they can coordinate that. And we previously didn't have that uh, in the policy. So um, I think it's a, we think it's an addition, a good addition to the policy. Um, this one also was reviewed by uh, the Admin Services Committee at the top of the month. Questions, concerns? Are the departments, they like this idea? Mike? Yeah. Oh, I did turn it off, sorry. The departments are okay with this type of? Uh, yes, like Gen not. generally speaking. There may be some different opinions um, uh, from some staff members on how to do things, but um, they'll, they'll like buy in. It's not going to open up doors for like chicken hawking or bird dog and other employees? No, no. Uh, I mean that's an existing that's an existing uh, right we, we have uh, we already encourage staff to um, apply for internal postings right so right. Um, that process non-formal process is already in place this actually just helps the coordinating of that if it ha if there is a transfer it helps the coordination of it essentially for those that may not be aware of the impact it, it lays out how to communicate the impact and transfer through it so it makes sense leaves everybody's eyes open I'm willing to move councillor Carlson question Moved by Councillor Carlson to approve the updated hiring policy number 1.0.01 for the town of Clairson, effective May 27th, 2024. All in favor? Approved. Okay, CAO report. Hey. Uh, yeah, any questions from council? These are uh, compiled by 10 or 11 uh, representatives uh, in the uh, organization managers and uh, employees and staff uh, over their areas of operations. Questions, comments? The 
Congrats yeah, yeah. to Deputy Chief Duros for his promotion. Good's a good man. Really? You betcha. Information brief, council committee report. A yes, this is your uh, committee report on your activities, uh, council. So it's uh, your time to your time to shine here. Thank you to everyone who submitted. Take it for information, unless somebody has something they want to add. Okay, information brief, council resolution status. Abe? Just uh, update on the status of previous uh, council resolutions. Um, got a couple in progress there. Uh, the Terry Fox run, you recall, we're trying to, uh, the town is trying to recruit a new um, director or coordinator for that run. So we are working, uh, reaching out to groups and, and sharing the message when we can. Uh, Abe and Blair and Abe, oh, myself and, and uh, a couple other staff members are working, actively working on uh, public participation plans as well. Perfect. Could I have a motion to adopt the information items? Councillor Cutler. Question? Moved by Councillor Cutler to adopt the information items as presented. All in favor? Approved. Motion to go in camera, please. I'll make the motion to go in, in camera. First one. Second. Oh. Councillor Meister. <laughs> Question? Moved by Councillor Meister to go in camera at 7.57 p.m. for the following items. A, personal privacy, FOIP section 17. B, advice from officials, FOIP section 24. All in favor? Opposed? Approved. Camera off. Motion to come out of in camera, please. Motion to come out of in camera. Who's going to make it? <laughs> Councillor Ross. <laughs> Question. Moved by Councillor Ross to come out of in camera at 9.53 p.m. All in favor? Approved. <laughs> no. Good try, though. Motion on personal privacy FOIP section 17. I will make that motion. Question? Moved by Councillor Zimmer to direct administration to vary the order to remedy number DOG-006 in the following ways. Four, zero, zero, four, six. zero, sorry, zero, zero, four, six. In the following ways, to remove all contraventions other than the contraventions that reference dogs owned in excess of three. To extend the timeline for compliance by one year to May 27th, 2025 and to add the requirement to license existing dogs. All in favor? Opposed? Approved. Motion to adjourn? Question? Moved by Councillor Carlson that the meeting adjourn at 9.54 p.m. All in favor? Hurry. Camera off, please.